Hey cuties, I'm Lanikia and you're watching What Happened on the Soaps. This is General Hospital Edition. All right, guys. So today is Friday. Yay! June the 30th. And it is the last day of the month. We are going into the last half of the year. Um, 2023. On a scale of 1 to 10, um, certain parts I really enjoyed, but then other parts, you know, they were just filler. So I'm going to give it a 7. Um, let's just jump right into it. We're going to start off with Finn and Elizabeth. She is still at his place. Um, and they had, they were sharing a moment, but then Violet comes running, um, cause she's, I, she's had a bad nightmare. And so she's talking to Elizabeth and Finn and everything and they calm her down. And uh, Elizabeth and Finn, I don't know if they're trying to be together again, or what exactly they're going to end up doing. But it was a, they had some sweet moments in this episode. And it, it wasn't too much. Before, when he was kind of overbearing all in her business, I didn't like them as a couple. But right now, I'm not mad at it. Like, if they show them... I, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. But I'm not mad at them being together. Um, you know what I mean? I'm, if they show them, great. If they don't, uh, you know, it doesn't make me any never mind. So let's move on. Uh, who do we want to go to next? Uh, Sasha and Sonny. So Sh Sonny calls Sasha over because you remember Gladys had told him, just talk to um, Sasha and tell her that she's making a mistake with the guardianship, like trying to end it, right? And so Sonny said he had told Gladys, you know, I'm going to do what's best. I'm going to give my recommendation recommendation based on what's best for Sasha. So after talking with Sasha and she just saying, you know, someday she'll have, it'll, it'll hit her about, you know, I can't drink coffee. Like she'll be making herself a cup of coffee and she'll remember how when she was pregnant, she couldn't drink coffee and how much she wanted it. And, you know, and it'll turn into like a, a sad moment and things like that, but it'll just hit her out of the blue. But then the next few days will be great. And she won't, have those moments and it's just grief it's just, you know that's just how grief works even because i don't think you ever really some people never stop grieving i don't think you ever do because some something out of the blue will just hit you and you'll remember something about a loved one um and sometimes it makes you sad sometimes it makes you smile that's just how it works and so sunny says if you had come in here saying everything's great i'm great everything's fine i'm 100 it's great all the time then he would have been concerned but because she does admit that she has bad days sometimes or bad moments sometimes he knows that it's real and he feels like mm -hmm. you know she can do this and she has his 100 she has 100 percent of his support um because he feels like she's ready to be on her own again and he says and i know gladys you know supports you and you'll always be family or and everything and so she gives um sunny a hug and it looked like they like she really did give him a hug because she was like thank you so much sunny i like no i really mean that so um because she might be going on maternity leave soon they've done a really good job covering her up but anyways that's all with them y'all um, so then we move right, right on along. Let me see. I got to make sure I got everybody good before I get to my favorites on this show right now. Um, let's see. Who else do we need to talk about? Um, then we go to, why is Ava in the bed with Austin? I said, girl, girl, what? No, I'm not trusting Austin, y'all. I'm just not. There's something about him. That's just, and I really did want him with Ava at one point, but now it's just weird. And they, and for me, it's weird how at one point I saw so much chemistry between them. Now I just look at him as being kind of creepy. <laughs> it's creepy to me now. And so I'm just like, Ava, no, not him, girl. Mm -mm. Not him, Ava. But um, so she's in this thing with him and they end up going to bed and baby right after she gathering up his skull and she told him you got to get out of here he said girl what you kicking me out and she said yes i'm kicking you out because no like this wasn't supposed to happen it wasn't meant to happen and it never should have happened anyway so I don't know. And like, and he says, we have chemistry between us. We went from fighting to all this. It was built up tension. And, and now we went to this, like, cause we have 
something there and she said if nicholas hadn't did what he did and uh, we would never even have been in each other's path in each other's orbit we never would have because i would be she would be with nicholas and so she like it's no what are you running for she, so she's like no like we're cool um and i don't want this so you need to leave or whatever so you're like all right then fine plus she tells him and if you do that ever again what you did as far as like um pretending to kidnap avery she was like you you gonna be the next person in them stables um i'm gonna be hiding his body because she was like don't do that no more that's my child don't play with my child and so i said well girl that it meant more if you hadn't yeah. slept with him and you said this but you slept with him now you're trying to be tough or whatever so anyways he ends up leaving the, and there go, she walks into the door and he said he said i'm gonna have to wake the person up to get off the island she said well swim he said i can't swim i'm tired i'm wore out i said okay austin and then he told her and if i if i'm not mistaken you gonna sleep good tonight too or whatever i said what 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 you trying to say he said you gonna sleep good tonight i said uh uh i know you're not austin and Ava said if you won't go get out of here I, that's what he said but what i heard was girl I, i'm gonna put you to, i put you to sleep go go on and get you a good night's rest i said not you bragging on yourself not you jay holiday but okay y'all let's move on with them so then we go over here and we see trina with her mama uh portia now um trina listen you know i love me some trina but girl what's going on between your mama and curtis ain't got nothing to do with you remember all those boundaries you was telling curtis and marshall and portia and everybody the respect of yours you respect that of theirs what's happening with your mama that ain't got nothing to do with you so portia is like no i don't want you to be upset with curtis what's what goes on in our marriage that that's not what happens with you like and she's like how could you forgive him he did you so wrong and trenton i said see that's what i don't like about trina and portia they're too unforgiving for me like dang y'all are too unforgiving for me y'all are like you too self-righteous and so trina is just like she's going off or whatever about curtis and portia says no i don't want you to have that attitude towards him like what's going she's like trina i'm am a i am an adult what's going on in my marriage has nothing to do with you so chill out i said tell her tell her um self-righteous mama because you self-righteous too girl so let's not even do that but i was like tell her ma'am and she's like i am so trina they let it go whatever and then they start talking about spencer because trina won't answer the phone phone for spencer and portia said what you be so ready to answer the phone she said plus um esme is supposed to be taking this parenting class and um i think she's gonna take it with spencer and trina said it just makes her sick knowing that um she wants spencer in her life life or at least she thought she did but she don't know about she if she wants esme and you know spencer is he spends all his time with Esme, and then when he's not with her, he's a single parent. And Portia's like, That's what I've been trying to say, uh, Trina, this whole time, or whatever. And I say, Trina, if you're gonna take Spencer back, stop going to your mama, um, talking about him. Like, honestly, stop going to your mama, talk bad mouthing him, um, and everything. And then knowing you want to take, hey, 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 thank you, knowing you want to take him back in the end. But she doesn't want, um, Esme in her life after everything Esme has done. And now if she if she gets with Spencer, she realizes Esme will always be in her life because Spencer will always want a place with Ace. Um, so she she just having to decide on what she wants to do. Now she heard the message that Spencer left when he tell he was talking trying to talk to her, but talk, yelling at Esme to get out of the room, right? So we're gonna go over here to Esme. Because that's it with Trina and them. Her mama is happy as heck that Trina doesn't want to be with him, even though she says he's changing. And on one hand, Trina's saying Spencer is the same. Then on another hand, she's like, but he is changing. I'm like, girl, leave the man alone. Go. Somebody please bring in another Cameron so Trina can be with him because this Spencer thing is not going to work out because she doesn't accept him fully for who he is. And I'm tired of y'all putting couples together that we love that we're like yes just to break them up or one of them doesn't have enough understanding let it go 
So then we move on, um, and Esme and Spencer. Now, remember, Esme came into the room, and he kicked her out or whatever. But she comes back with the ice pack because she tells him, you need to um, take care of that because, you know, there could be long-term damages. It could be long-term damages uh, for that. But anyway, she bringing him an ice pack and everything, doing all the things that Trina should be doing. And she over there bonding with your man, Trina, while you sitting over here mad and running out on him with his ego bruise. Esme over here bonding with him, talking about, you know, I know you got into a fight and he said yes and he was like i was trying to do the right thing but i don't like dex and he was explaining to her why and she said well i understand why you're doing that today i understand it about dex but shouldn't you be mad at jocelyn because she the one that did cameron wrong and he said it's complicated you don't know everything or whatever and she says i know what it's like to be judged she said i probably have it better than you because i don't have my memories you remember when you were a bad person and now that you're trying to be good everybody keeps reminding you and she said and the whole time you're just trying to be a better person and so you you hate you hate that you overreacted and anytime you overreact people are like see that's it that's it i knew you hadn't changed or whatever i said Yo, this girl over here bonding with spencer trina while you sitting over there talking to your mama <laughs> She over here bonded with him. And to be quite honest, they do have chemistry as well. And, and they were having a nice little conversation because he sat down and he started talking about boarding school with her because she said, you're the only person that doesn't throw up my past or bring up memories that we had once had with each other. He said, yeah, because I don't like to think about it. Well, she was like, but you could talk about it to me or whatever. So they started talking about them being in boarding school when they were dating and how... Um, you know, she understood him when nobody else did, but then he find, found out it was all just a lie that she was manipulating him, you know, because Ryan had sent her to him and everything. And she said, but I, I, I can't believe it all was a lie. Some part of Esme, the old me, had to really like you. And he said, well, there was this one time, um, I think it was Esme's birthday or he just wanted to get her a gift. I can't remember. But he said that he bought her this expensive piece of jewelry. He said, because all the leechers who, you know, were just using him for his money and his Cassidy name and all that was like, buy her a piece of jewelry. So he said, I did, but I also had a snow globe in my room. And every time you would come in, you would always play with that snow globe. So he said, I bought you a piece of jewelry and I bought you the snow globe. And you liked the jewelry, but you loved the snow globe. And she said, um, probably because it was from you and, and just sentimental. I said, mm, child. And so then they were doing reminiscing, going down memory lane or whatever. And then she tells him, there's a parenting class. And he said, it's for A, so I'm going to go with you. And she's like, okay. I said, well, baby, I'm not, <laughs> I'm really not getting invested in Trina and Spencer. I'm not getting invested in that at all. Because y'all pretty much letting us see you about to put Esme and, and Spencer back together. So she walks out or whatever. And she tells him, put the, keep the ice pack on you about 10 more minutes. And he's like, all right. Because he had told her, maybe I'm being a little hard on you. Because the same, um, like, because at this point, he knows her memory is not back. So he was like, the, so the same, you know, uh, grace that I want people to show me, I could show a little bit more of that to you um, since you don't remember. And she was like, thanks. And so anyway, she was leaving and she told him to keep the ice pack on 10 minutes longer. And so she leaves out and he looks at the door and she walks out the door and closes it behind her. And then she has like this smile, like, oh my gosh. And it wasn't an evil smile. It, it wasn't anything like that. It was just, you know, when you like somebody and you just smile because you like them and it, they, you just share a nice moment. That's all it was. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> Trina, you done lost your man because of this fight. And um, that's it with them, y'all. But let me get over here to the meat and potatoes for me. I said, it's about time y'all show them because when they're not on here, this show gets a little bit slow, <laughs> but they showed Jordan, right? So Zeke calling Jordan up on the phone, told my, you know, I think we should talk. Let's meet me, meet me for dinner. And she said, baby, no, I'm not meeting you for nothing. Because, you know, she upset with him because he ran his mouth and told Portia that he had a one night stand with Jordan and they slept together. He didn't have to tell Portia that all he had to do was say, I met Jordan and we had, you know, and we connected 
or and she was just telling me about Curtis or whatever. He didn't have to let her know they had a one night stand. And then Portia went and threw the mess up in Jordan's face. So Zeke is not Jordan's favorite person right now. So she said, "Sir, there is nothing we can, we need to talk about, and I don't want to talk to you." And then as she's doing that, she get a knock, knock, knock on her door, and who is it? None other than Curtis. So she said, "I gotta go," and hangs up on uh, Zeke. So then Curtis come in and he, she was like, there ain't nothing for me to say to you either. What do you want? And he said, I didn't come in here to fight. And she said, okay, then what you want? He was like, well, I want to know why you told Portia. Well, I thought you said you didn't come to fight because it sounds like you came in here to fight. And she said, first of all, I didn't tell Portia anything. He said, we both agreed not to tell Portia. And then the next thing I know, you all went and talked, ran your mouth and told her that we kissed and all that. Now, why would you do that, Jordan? I, I, I. It's not because she wants you back if that's where you're trying to go with this, sir. Because she said... I did not tell Portia anything, and I said it was best that we didn't tell her or whatever, and that was it. He said, well, then how did she find out? Now, she finally went on and said, Portia's brother told. He said, Zeke, how was Zeke know? And she said, because I met Zeke, I was in a vulnerable place. You had just went back to Portia. I met him, and I needed to vent to somebody, so I told him. I didn't use your name. He said, well, if you didn't use my name, how did he find out? And she said, well, Portia introduced us together. Um, and so it wasn't hard for him to come up at two plus two or whatever. So it wasn't hard for him to figure it out. And he said, well, I don't even understand why you was venting to him in the first place. And she said, like, it was our personal business or whatever. Why are you telling the stranger? And she said, didn't you have Portia to run and tell to? Because, Curtis, you're not going to act like you went stringing port." jordan along as well making her think that maybe y'all was gonna have some type of relationship and then you decide to go on back home to your wife and so she needed to talk to somebody and she thought she was just talking to a nice man and she was telling him what had happened and so she's sorry stuff got messed up with them but that's not her fault you work that out with portia go on instead of being over here with jordan go on back over there with portia and work some stuff out because she needs a friend she got a vent too so then they're talking or whatever and what happens she get another knock 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 at her door and it is zeke and so she told zeke if i didn't want to talk to you on the phone what makes you think you coming to my office makes me want to talk to you i said well tell them tell them jordan tell them and so he looking and he said oh Curtis is here and Curtis is like yeah I'm here and I bet you just can't wait to go back and tell Portia and he said well my sister has a right to know and she had a right to know about that kiss and Curtis said that wasn't none of your business and he said and if you know what's good for you keep your mouth shut I said uh uh I'm liking this <laughs> just so messy just so petty and messy well y'all know what it is but anyways he said you keep your mouth shut and i said well, what you got to say zeke and zeke said oh you should be a better man he didn't say all this but that's what i heard and i'm paraphrasing he said you should be a better man than my sister and if you had done anything with jordan in the first place then there would have been nothing to tell anyways and he said but my sister has a right to know what goes on in her marriage behind her back he said really i ain't even talking about portia you went and told trina that she should stay clear of me that i'm not to be trusted and all that he said well i don't know maybe she she should and credits now i was agreeing with credits on this that ain't your business trina was just trusting me and then here you come running your mouth with maybe she shouldn't trust you he said my business between my daughter i don't have nothing to do with you I agree. And so you don't don't go run into her talking bad about me behind my back. I mean, cause honestly, you don't you don't have to do that, Zeke. If you was gonna talk to talk about somebody bad, you could have said something about your sister because she was the one who lied for 20 years. But anyways, Portia said neither one of you are any good. So both of y'all need to be quiet. That, that Portia, Jordan said that. That's not what exactly what she said, but that's what I was hearing. And so she was like, so both of y'all, you need to leave. And Curtis was pretty much just like, oh, yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool. But um, he told, this is what Curtis said. He told Zeke, I'm everything, it's all good over here. But I'm going to tell, but Zeke needs to learn how to shut his mouth or it's going to be me and you. Stay out my business or it's me and you. That's what I heard. And so then Curtis walks out or whatever. And Zeke is like, 
besides all that, uh, Jordan, we do need to talk. Uh, she said, uh, uh, you ain't got nothing to say to me. So you might as well turn around and pack it up and leave my office because it ain't no me and you. It ain't no dates. You can't keep your mouth closed. You went and told what we had romantically to your sister and stuff, and I'm a private person. So go on about your business. Goodbye. And so he left, and that was General Hospital today, guys. It was good to me at the end. I like the uh, Jordan and Zeke and, and, and Curtis because I'm messy like that. But anyways, guys, that was General Hospital today. It is the weekend. Y'all, if you go out, even if you don't, stay hydrated, be safe, be blessed, stay cool, um, enjoy yourselves this weekend, and I will see you Monday for all new episodes of What Happened on the Soaps, General Hospital Edition. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.